Welcome to the RIMAX Academy. My name is Max, and I am the AI avatar of RIMAX Lubricants. I am created to give technical trainings in the Academy, so it is my goal to become your trusted teacher when it comes to lubricants knowledge. Of course, you can still always reach out to the real people at the head office of RIMAX, and don't worry, I will not feel offended. In this video we will explain the basics of lubrication, based on the RIMAX Poseidon passenger car engine oil as an example. We will take the information on the label and the technical data sheet to guide you through the most important information. Let's get started! Let us have a look at the RIMAX products. We took the Poseidon XR5W40 as an example. You will find quite a lot of information on the labels of this product. We will discuss the main key characteristics of this product to make you better understand the difference between this product and another product. First of all, view the number written big and bold, 5W40. 5W40 is the viscosity of the product. But what does this mean? The viscosity of the product. The viscosity is a measurement of resistance to flow at one temperature. As example, water has a very low viscosity, and honey has a high viscosity. The same goes for oil. Some oils are rather thin, and some oils are thicker. The lower the numbers, the lower the viscosity. So a viscosity of 10 is lower than a viscosity of 50, which means the viscosity of 10 is thinner. For engine oils, the viscosity is classified by the Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE. Therefore, you see often SAE written in front of the viscosity numbers, like SAE 50 or SAE 5W40. SAE makes a difference between monograde and multigrade oil grades. Monograde oil can be recognized by the fact that there is only one number, like SAE 50. Multigrade oils can easily be recognized by the two values on either side of the W in the viscosity classification, like SAE 5W40. The W stands for winter. The number on the left side of the W in the viscosity classification informs you about the winter or cold property characteristics of this product, which means it indicates how well the product flows when the engine is cold and not at operating temperature yet. The number on the right side of the W informs you about the summer property characteristics of this product, which means it indicates how well the product flows under hot circumstances when the engine is at operating temperature. The bigger the gap between the value before the W and behind the W, the less the oil loses performance under the influence of the temperature. So a product with a viscosity of 5W50 better responds to temperature fluctuations than a 10W30. Until about 15 years ago, it didn't matter very much which oil you used in your car. Often it was a 15W40 or 10W40, and this oil lubricated excellent. Due to increasing attention for the environment, car manufacturers are also looking for possibilities to save fuel. One of those ways is to use a thinner oil, even though the primary purpose of oil is to lubricate the engine parts. The advantage of a thinner oil is that it generates less resistance so that the engine can run more efficiently. A logical consequence of this is that the engine uses less fuel and emits less CO2 emissions, something that the car manufacturers focus on. Over time, engine oil has become increasingly thinner, from 15W40 and 10W40 to 5W40 and 5W30. And these days you see products like 0W20, 0W12, and even 0W8, products thin like water. Trucks use thicker oils than cars, because thicker oils give more protection for more severe operations. Also, when the conditions are getting harder, it is wise to choose for a higher viscous product. Such as driving through mountains, pulling a boat, dusty conditions, heavy loads, etc. Finding the optimal viscosity is finding a balance between engine protection and minimizing wear. You want the oil to be of lower viscosity to support efficiency and improve fuel economy by decreasing engine friction, but also give good protection at a cold start of the engine since the thinner oils flows quicker through the whole engine than a ticker oil. But you want your oil as thick as possible to give protection under more severe operations.
Therefore, you will see that trucks and other heavy-duty machinery are using normally thicker oils than cars. Because thicker oils give more protection for more severe operations. Also, when the conditions are getting harder, it is wise to choose for a higher viscous product. The best viscosity depends on the type of machinery, on driving behavior and external conditions. For industrial oils, you will see that these are not classified by SAE, but by ISO, like ISO 46 or ISO 320. For industrial oils, you see in general monograde products, since these products don't face similar temperature fluctuations as in engines or gearboxes. Most people who don't understand much about lubricating oils only look at the viscosity grade of the oil. So the only search for a 15W40 or a 10W40 without understanding more of the specific characteristics of the oils. But there is much more to understand. For example, the type of base oil being used to produce this product. On our products, we will write about the type of base oil under the viscosity in the gold, silver or bronze bar. A lubricant is composed of base oils and additives. In general, about 90% or more of the lubricant is base oil. So you will understand that base oil is important component of the finished product. In general, we make a difference in mineral base oils and synthetic base oils. For both groups, the base material is overwhelmingly crude oil. The synthetic base oils are the base oils artificially modified or so-called synthesized. It means that these oils has gone through a chemical process to make them cleaner or stronger. The mineral base oils have gone through a less refined process. Within the synthetic oils, several classifications, groups, are made depending on the processes the base materials have gone through, like PAO base oils and ester base oils, all with its own characteristics making the product suitable for specific applications. Synthetic oils give all kind of advantages compared to mineral oils. In principle, they give better protection than mineral oils. Synthetic oils give, for example, better protection against extreme temperatures, against oxidation and thermal breakdown, and they avoid sludge problems. And an important factor is that in general, the synthetic oils give longer protection than mineral oils. So mineral oils needs to be replaced faster than synthetic oils but also mineral oils can be preferred for certain applications. Mineral oils offer better seal compatibility, which make them more suitable for older vehicles. The main advantages of mineral-based oil is its cost-effectiveness. It is relatively inexpensive compared to other types of base oils, making it a popular choice in many industrial and automotive applications. Finally, there is also a group of base oils in between mineral and synthetic, which is often called semi-synthetic oils. Semi-synthetic base oils are a mixture of mineral oil and synthetic oil, which are engineered to have many of the benefits of full synthetic oil without the cost. At Rimax, we call these products synthetic blends, where the synthetics are called full synthetic. Now that we understand the importance of the base oil, it is also important to look at the additives. Although the additives make up for only a small part of the finished product, they play an essential role in composing a product. It is the additive that differentiates the lubricant types, such as engine oils, hydraulic oils, gear oils, and various fluids. The additives are mixed into the base oils to influence and boost their properties, minimize their unwanted features, and even add some new characteristics to the oils. Some examples of lubricant additives are rust inhibitors, antioxidants, and viscosity improvers. Additives are extremely pricey. Creating the perfect additives packages by choosing and combining different additive types is a very complex job done by additive companies. We as Rimax only use additives that are tested in the field by the OEMs. We use the additives of the so-called major four additive companies, which are Lubrizol, Oronite, Afton, and Infinium. The longevity of the additive package depends on the quality. The longer a lubricant is used, the less effective the additive package will become because the additives degrade. Therefore, you always want to use the best additive packages and combine this with the best base oils to ensure maximum performance as long as possible. Now we have a good understanding of the viscosity 
and of the base oil and additives of the product, we will have a look at the performance level of the product. On our small packs, you will find on the front label a selection of the performance levels based on the industry standards, and on the back label, the complete list of the performance levels. A lubricant can meet the specification or can be approved by certain institutes or original equipment manufacturers. Meeting a specification means the right combination of base oils and additives is used according to the described specifications by OEM, API, JSO, ACIA, etc. We as RIMAX can then submit a lubricant for an official approval. Approval is an official proof of a lubricant's quality. Both meeting the prescribed specifications and official approvals tell you something about the good quality of the oil product. The most known institutes in the lubricant industry are API and ACIA. API is the American Petroleum Institute. They classify engine oils and gear oils. On this specific product, you will see, for example, API SNCF, which means that this product is classified by the American Petroleum Institute as SNCF. ACA is the European Institute for Classification for Passenger Cars, Vans, Trucks and Buses. For the Poseidon XR, the ACEA has classified this product as A3B4, meaning this product meets the prescribed specifics being listed under this specific A3B4 classification. Other institutes you may come across are JSO and ILSAC. Next to the mentioned institutes, also the original equipment manufacturers are playing an important role in describing the performance quality of an engine oil. Original equipment manufacturers, or so-called OEMs, are the known car manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, Ford, BMW, and others. These car manufacturers created their own classification system for selecting the technically suitable products for their vehicles. For example, Volkswagen decides how the lubricant should be to be suitable for their vehicles. The additive suppliers create formulations to meet these described specifications, and we as oil manufacturer can buy these additive packages including formulation from the additive suppliers, and we can have our product tested by, in this case Volkswagen, to make the claim of the certain Volkswagen performance levels like VW 505.00. Now you understand the most important characteristics of a lubricant. There is still some additional information we can tell you about the products, which is as well mentioned on the label, like for which fuel type of engine this product is suitable. On this specific product, you see that this product is suitable for petrol, diesel, LPG, and hybrid engines. Although different fuels means different engines, and although consumers often believe that diesel engine oils cannot be used in petrol engines and visa versa, there is not such a thing as an oil which can only be used for a diesel engine or only for petrol engine. Petrol passenger cars and diesel passenger cars use the same product. On this product you will see the icon of a car, which means that this product is formulated for cars. We have different product groups with each an own icon like trucks, motorcycle, industry, and other segments. Every product group has its own demands and product characteristics, which means that a 10W40 for cars is not recommended to be used as a 10W40 for truck or for truck tractor. So be aware of the product group where the product is designed for. Finally, we still have some marketing terms and design aspects on the label. In the orange text block at the right top of the bottle, we always explain the technology that our R&D department has used to develop this product and that gives it a unique characteristic in terms of quality. And we always put the Dutch shield on our labels to proudly emphasize the origin of our company, the Netherlands. The shield explains that all our products are produced or formulated here and that we cherish and value the high quality work standards of our country. On the back label you will find, next to all performance levels, also a short product description as well as the safety text in all different languages, which is in most countries obliged to put on the product. Now, let's have a look at an important document for your lubricant, the product data sheet. On a product data sheet, also called technical data sheet, you will find similar information as on the label, like product name, the viscosity, the type of base oil, and the performance level. 
Additionally, you will find on the TDS a description of the product, telling what the oil is meant for and the most important benefits of the product. Finally also, the typical properties are listed on the TDS, which is a selection of important specifications of the product. Typical properties listed of engine oil are the density, the viscosity at different degrees, the viscosity index of the product, the pour point and flash point. The oil density refers to the mass per unit volume of the oil. It's a crucial physical property that determines the weight of a given volume of oil. The viscosity tells you something about the thickness of the oil at different temperatures, so we'll always see the higher temperature the lower the viscosity, meaning when the oil gets hotter, the viscosity comes down. The viscosity index indicates how the oil reacts to temperature changes. The higher the viscosity index is, the more stable the product and the less the product reacts when the oil faces very hot or very cold temperatures. The pour point of the product is an indication of the low temperature characteristics. It is an indicator of the oil of at which low temperature the product is not functioning well anymore. So when the technical data sheet mentions a pour point of minus 30 degrees Celsius, it means that the product will not flow anymore below this temperature, so it will not reach the places which needs to be lubricated, and metal-to-metal -metal contact will occur and will lead to damage. On the other side, we have the flash point, which is an indicator on how well the oil functions at high temperatures. The higher the flash point, the better, because it means the oil can better resist extreme heat. Most cars have typical engine temperature of around 120 degrees Celsius. But to also handle the peaks which can occur at more severe circumstances, you will see that engine oils have a flash point of at least 200 degrees Celsius. Now you know the basics of lubrication, you will understand the differences between products, and you will be able to read the label of a product and to read the technical data sheets. It is all no rocket science. The OEMs and the lubricant institutes decide together with the additive producers on the formulations of products. We, as oil manufacturers, can buy additive packages and use the formulation as prescribed. By doing so, we as RIMAX have the perfect product for each application. Not all oil manufacturers follow this same path, resulting in bad lubricants circulating in the market. And on top of that, there is a lot of misleading information written on product labels or technical data sheets, mostly to camouflage the poor performance of the product. Don't let yourself be misled by this kind of information or by rumors in the market. Follow the basics and follow the oil institutes and OEMs in their advices. Thank you for watching. My name is Max from Rymax Lubricants. I hope to see you again very soon in the Rymax Academy.